because that'll create a lot of pressure on the Irish batsmen. They haven't got enough experience to go out there and knock those runs off against the stronger side. So they'll be feeling a bit nervy if they lose early wickets. So that's where the Pakistani chances are. If they can pick up early wickets and keep on picking wickets at regular interval, they can still find themselves on a winning side. Yeah, as we speak, I look around me and I can see that there's a bit of rain coming down, a touch of a drizzle, as it were. And the pitch is actually covered at present, waiting for the umpires to give the all clear to have that cover taken off. They're standing out there, Billy Bowden, Brian Jerling, discussing. And maybe they will have it taken off. It's, it's not too heavy. In fact, it might just be stopping. The sun actually is out. Let's talk about the Irish. Now, this is an opportunity for them to make history when they played against Zimbabwe got a tie got out of jail did well to do so but now a realistic opportunity green pitch and all to actually make history here what would they have to do well I think they have to survive against the new ball to start with because Omar Gul is a kind of a bowler who can really bowl well on this kind of a surface along with uh, Raif Taha who was absolutely brilliant in the first game he bowled uh, in the right areas got the ball to do a lot and if they can make the new ball count and pick up early wickets they'll create a pressure on them but having said that if the Irish batsmen they survive against the new ball I think it'll be difficult for the Pakistanis to come back and pull back the things. Now, I want to put you in a situation where you're the Irish coach. And I say to you, sit in the change room, speak to these guys as they go out to bat. It's a green wicket out there. What approach should they take? Well, I would, I would simply tell them to go out there and keep on showing the awareness of their off stump and make sure they respect the good deliveries. And if there is a bad ball, go after that. Don't be overcautious play regular cricket, normal cricket, and the runs they'll come. They don't have to do anything extravagant. You'd expect, though, that they'd be nervous. So looking into their change room there, and they're all sitting, waiting for the weather to clear up, as it were. The sun is out, as I say, and it's just the umpires who are out there waiting to see whether the groundsman is in agreement with them. They're looking in the distance to see whether the rain is coming as well. And should they feel that it's not, then they'll have the cover taken off and, and continue with proceedings. But the Irish will be nervous because this is a real opportunity. Well, they'll definitely be nervous because they're very close uh, to make history uh, uh, in their uh, cricketing life. And uh, getting out Pakistan for 132, it's not a small effort. It's a huge effort. And they are very close to moving into Super 8s. And there'll be a huge, huge moment for them. And they'll be definitely nervous. But, you know, like you said, what would be the coach telling them? Just tell them, just play normal cricket. Don't be nervous. Try and spend time at the wicket. Don't lose early wickets. We'll be there. Yeah, good news. As you see from your pictures, the covers are up. They're taking them off the field, so it shouldn't be long now before the start of proceedings. Let's just have a look again. For those of you who are coming in from your lunch at what happened to Pakistan? There is that scorecard. It makes a sorry reading. If you're not Irish, 132 all out. Imran Nazir at the top was very flashy. Still stayed out there for quite a few deliveries. 51 for his 24. And then Muhammad Yusuf, 15. And Kamran Akmal, 27. And right at the end, Muhammad Sami, 12 of 34 balls. Now, time for you to see some of the highlights of that innings if you can call them that because if you're Pakistani you won't say their highlights they're all Irish really there you go a four early on in proceedings and then a wicket they bowled really well didn't they yes uh, there were there were some nervy moments when they picked up two wickets and they try, started to try very hard but they eventually calmed down and then kept on picking up wickets and uh, creating problems for the Pakistani batsmen yeah, all the way through, they'd, they'd bowl some balls that were in the wrong areas and they'd get put away. But there were more good balls other than bad balls. They did tend to bowl wides now and again. And Pakistan just didn't have many opportunities, enough opportunities in their book to get away. Celebrations all over the place. When they get a wicket, there were celebrations on the field.
and celebrations off the field. That man, Bota, he bowled fantastically, gave absolutely nothing away and deserved both wickets. Well, the conditions, they were tailor-made for those bowlers. They kept on pitching the right areas. They didn't try to overdo things. All they were looking to do was to pitch the ball back of the length and let the wicket do something for them. And eventually, it worked out for them. They kept on picking up wickets. And one common thing about the Pakistani batsmen, they kept on nicking the ball either to slips or the wicketkeeper. Yeah, you did see some shots now and again. There were periods where it would get away from the Irish, but all in all, they'll say they're quite happy to bowl out Pakistan for 132. Then some good catches. That was one of them. Had to run backwards and take a catch. Here's the one I was waiting for. Yeah, you can't, you can't blame. Uh, you can't take anything away from the Irish, but when that particular baller, Ranking, was brought into the attack, the batsmen at that time playing Kamran Akmal and uh, Azhar Mahmood, they should, should have been telling themselves why he's been brought back into the attack. The answer would have been they, won't pick, uh, they want to pick up few wickets and they should have been more cautious, but they kept on trying to hit boundaries and in the end, the situation was much more dire for the Pakistanis and that was the last wicket. Yep, and celebration all around on the field, as I said, and also off the field. And we too will be waiting here to see how things unfold on this green wicket. It's got grass here at Sabina Park. Amir, do you give them any chance at all, the Irish? Well, I, I'm giving them 50%. I'm not taking anything away because they've got few batsmen who can actually bat throughout the innings and uh, the the way Bray batted in the last uh, one day against Zimbabwe, he was absolutely brilliant. So, Bray and his opening partner, if they can put up a partnership of at least 30 runs, I think things, they will become much more difficult for the Pakistanis. But let's hope, as a Pakistani, I'm hoping <laughs> that the new ball is that. going to work for them and they keep on picking up wickets after that. Yeah, now, when sides bowl, teams out for a little target normally you'd have a bowler that leads the side who would you put it on for Pakistan here someone's got a lead from the front and who will that be I'm banking on Omar Gul and on you know the first change bowler is always going to be very crucial and Mohammad Sami is a bowler who can really trouble the batsman on this kind of a surface he's got the pace and if he keeps on pitching up the ball in the right areas he'll be a very difficult campaigner so you feel that Mohamed Sami should be first change and not open the ball? Because Raif Tahar can be very handy with a new ball. He's a kind of a bowler who doesn't try and bowl very fast. He tries to pitch the ball in the right areas and the conditions, they'll favour him. Because by pitching the ball up, as a bowler, you can get the ball to swing in the air and also off the surface. So I would give the new ball to run uh, to Raif Tahar and Omar Gul. OK, well, it looks like we're all set for the action. The umpires are on their way out there, and behind them are the Irish batsmen. They need to get 133 to win this Group D match. 2.66 runs to the over. That's all they need, but they've got conditions to contend with here at Sabina Park. Their supporters will be egging them on, no doubt. They've done fantastically throughout this tournament thus far. I say throughout, it's only been a couple of games. This is Ireland's second game. That's who's in there. Porterfield, William Porterfield. He'll have to contribute a lot more than he did in that first game. Modest record. He's got 100, 112 as a best. And you'd expect that with um, him being new in the international arena. There's the man who got 115. Well, he has to replicate the, the performance he gave away in the first game. And if he can score a 50 here, it'll be a huge contribution towards the Irish cause. But for Pakistan, this man has got to do something different if the Pakistanis they really have to stay in this tournament. He has to pick up wickets with a new ball to set the tone of the game in the favour of the Pakistanis. It'll be really interesting to see who partners him at the other end. The umpires are ready. The batsmen seem to be ready. Billy Bowden 
time to play. Now time to go to the commentators, Ramiz Raja and Michael Holding. Yes! And run straight away. Three slips in place, no gully in position. And that ball was expertly placed by Bray for one through the gully area. Pressure will be on Pakistan. They'll have to ball out Ireland. I've got Michael Holding here with me. Uh, Mikey, what should be the game plan? How will the bowlers be feeling at this point when you're desperate for results? Does that put them under a lot of stress, pressure? What do they need to do out there? Rami says they'll be under a lot of pressure, these bowlers. They'll be uptight. What they need to try and do is relax as much as they possibly can and not just concentrate on running in and bowling fast because Umar Gul has pace. What they should recognize is that the Irish bowlers, they didn't have a great deal of pace. They didn't try to bowl fast. All they tried to do was put the ball in the right area, hit that seam and get the movement off the seam. This is not really a pitch that you're looking to bang the ball in. You pitch it up and get movement off the seam. Bring those slip fielders into play. But I know the fast bowlers will be under pressure. It will take them an over or two to relax totally. Good batting. Played it with a straight back. Owen Morgan is off the mark as well. So it's Porterfield who's off the mark. Every run will mean uh, something substantial to Ireland. Good that they've got an inform opener batting against a good quality pace attack that'll uh, cancel a bit of advantage that Pakistan may have <laughs> I tell you what Ramiz I get the feeling that this is not when we are near right Ireland will either get these runs quite comfortably or they will fit ball well short Two point seven runs per over required. Basically, it means nothing. Play out the overs, and Ireland will get there. No. A lot of pad before the ball hit the bat. Margul falling through all the way down towards the batsman, giving him the steer. What pressure is this man under? More than likely, this will be his last World Cup. No! Thinking uh, differently, Bray, coming uh, down the track. First over is ball, two without a wicket. Bray on one, his partner is on one. Omar Gul has just finished his first over, none for two. Mohamed Sami is coming on to bowl now. He's got pace. He'll get something out of this pitch as well because of that pace that he can generate. But he's got to bowl the channel. He can spray the ball around. This is where he's gone wrong quite consistently in his career. Let's see how he handles the pressure. 111 wickets in 80 matches. He's a strike bowler. Can he strike early for Pakistan? That's a very good start. Pace, bounce, and good line. I think you can see from the field the placing, though, that Insmam will have perhaps doesn't have as much faith in Mohamed Sami's accuracy as he did in Umar Gul. 
just two slips has three others on the offside he had a similar field for Umar Gul but the onside that extra slip has been moved by the square leg umpire just giving him a bit more cover ball bouncing off the pad quite hard another quick delivery from Sami it's a leg by all these runs will count uh, greatly to uh, Ireland's cause how difficult yeah. Mikey it would be for uh, somebody like Mohammed Sami or even for Omar Gul to start off uh, their stints against left-handers well it varies it depends on how accustomed you are to bowling to a left-handed batsman lots of bowlers find it a difficult task they find it uncomfortable bowling to left-handers when they bowl right arm over certainly beaten for pace some other bowlers have absolutely no problems you have some bowlers right arm over the wicket bowlers as in fact who enjoy bowling to left-handers or swinging back in to the left-hander more times than not you see the ball going across their bodies Sammy does get the ball to swing away from right-handers, which would bring it into the left-hander. Yes! He's not a fluent player through the onside, Bray. Very se severe square through the off. given as a run there you see I'm um, uh, getting plenty of runs through the offside 115 he got great knock against Zimbabwe a couple of sixes uh, over a point and uh, an uppercut over third man oh it's close enough to call Jerling is not interested the umpire It's given as a run. So maybe there's a little bit of bat involved. Otherwise, it was uh, a straightforward decision for the umpire, really. Certainly was a lot of swing. Certainly didn't hit it. The bat hit the boot. And that's the sound that umpire Erling heard, which he thought was the bat hitting the ball. Wow, that's close. It certainly wasn't going over the top. Clearly uh, misreading the script. Uh, Brian Jerling. Once again, ball getting to the batsman very quickly. Five without a wicket. Pakistan will need the breaks to go their way with such a low total. That was one that went against them already. Luck of the Irish beginning to play its part. So Ireland uh, surviving. Some is over without a wicket yes. and Suresh will give him one however they come it won't matter one iota to Ireland how they get these runs once they do get them all 133 of them again beaten for pace he's not getting the ball to move around jag around from a goal but he's uh, getting it through quite quickly oh, no nicely played 
And if they are going to defend, defend this total Pakistan, it'll be uh, a record performance from them. The lowest total successfully defended in World Cups, 134. As we have another look at Gould's first over, which was uh, a very decent one. Got the ball to swing away, shape away just a little outside that off stump. 134 was successfully defended by Zimbabwe versus England in 1992. Pick and uh, just a little wide. England in that game were bowled out for 125. Remember England qualified to play Pakistan in the final of the 92 World Cup, so got a big hiccup against Zimbabwe early in the World Cup. High is bobbing out, making sure that he uh, is inside the line of that ball. Umar Gul is a little pumped up. Wait! Inzamam had three slips for a brain. Now he's two slips and a gully in place. Which is uh, quite sensible because he does like that area. Here's that fielder there, Azar Mahmood. His earlier uh, position in that third slip area. Fighting. Nicely defending that one on the move when he was uh, pushing that one. Just figured I'd want to show off on a few people here and put exactly where he is. <laughs> Just let the folks at home know how technical we can get here, Amis. At times over technical. <laughs> yes. Down the track and he's found the gap. Sunny was quickly across, good return in. He released the ball very quickly. Good attacking cricket from Sami. Three gone, seven without a wicket. Well, he's certainly getting adventurous, Jeremy Bray. Quite happy to use his feet down to Umar Gold. I think the fact that he got that far down the pitch helped him as well. It changed the angle, of course, with the ball going in the air. It went wide of gully. If he had played that shot from within the crease, it would have gone a lot finer. This is an equation that is certainly helping Ireland. 126 to win, 10 wickets in hand. Shouldn't be difficult on paper at least. Practically, they've uh, had a pretty decent start. Seven without a wicket is good going. Tommy wants some uh, adjustment at point. Point to get a little finer. Once again, pad before the bat and given. This is what Pakistan were hoping. It's Sami who's provided them with that all-important platform to attack Ireland. I thought Bray was lucky, really, to survive uh, his Yorker in the last over. This time, umpire Brian Jerling had a good look and then uh, awarded the decision in favour of Pakistan. Well, it pitched in line came back and Hawkeye is suggesting that it would have gone over the top. He's a big man, Jeremy Bray. He's a tall fellow. But it's shaped. The shape gave the umpire the impression that it would have hit the stumps. Well, he was fortunate the first time, perhaps a bit unfortunate on this occasion. Seven for one. Western Union, we understand that cricket is more than just a game. It's a passion you share with everyone back home.
Just send money from participating Western Union agent locations to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, or Sri Lanka. Mention promo code CRICKET2007 and get your country's T-shirt absolutely free. Get into the cricket spirit now. Transact today with Western Union. So seven for one, first wicket has gone down. Owen Morgan uh, is the new man in, good average, very good strike rate as well. Sami with a Yorker, well delivered. It can be difficult really to control that Yorker when the ball is new. Normally the Yorkers and the slow deliveries are uh, Ball more by bowlers when the ball gets just a little rough. Shaping the ball back into the left-hander. That uh, bat was hiding behind the pad, so that uh, put a doubt in the mind of the umpire, whether a shot was played at all or not. Pushing hard at the ball. Mohamed Yusuf uh, will get there eventually, but two runs taken. Every run's been cheered by a large Irish gathering here. That uh, wicket has uh, sort of quietened their uh, exuberance a little. But, uh, the Pakistani part of uh, support uh, supporters. Standing up now in anticipation. Lovely drive. And that's beaten the middle fielder. Raif Takal with a dive. It's Shweb Malik. Really hearing after that one. Ball wins the race. It's a delightful drive through the offside. First boundary of the innings. This is what Mohamed Sami has to be careful about. That he doesn't get too excited about what's happening here and start pitching all these deliveries full and looking for a swing if it doesn't swing that's what happens offers a nice beautiful drive to the batsman he has to also remember that he has got two slip fielders there try and get the ball to go across the body of the left hand at times don't just bring all of them in well, the idea was right there Porterfield was uh, aware of what was uh, happening out there. Avoided that length quite nicely. It's a great atmosphere here. Allen in with a historic chance to beat Pakistan and enter the next stage of the World Cup. Will go on 14 for one. Tension on the ground, he's biting her fingernails already. 14 for one. Jamaica Airways, uh, Love Bird is uh, just landing. Really is. Uh, Splendid setting. Porterfield not out on nine. His partner is on one. Gray, the centurion. Last game dismissed for three. Oh, that got big on him. Expertly played in the end. He didn't really go hard at the ball, otherwise it could have been a lot different, the result. Managed to play the ball down. It really did hit his gloves quite severely. Are you sure he played that one, Ramiz? Or did the ball play him? Let's have a look here. 
I think that ball played him. We don't have any, a clue as to exactly where that was going. Fortunately, the equipment used by modern day cricketers is so good. The gloves, the pads offer a great deal of protection. He's a beautiful bowler, Omar Gul. Tall, good action. And uh, seem the ball swing it. Almost a complete bowler with the new ball, but uh, he's uh, yet to develop his skills when it comes to handling it in the deep end of the innings. Doesn't really develop the Yorkers, the slow deliveries. But he's young, is still learning the art of, uh, of becoming a top quality bowler. He's already there, if not or so below becoming the very best in the business look at that delivery almost uh, like a leg break or a wrong one to the left hander this did too much absolutely no chance of him getting bat on ball here just went right across his body needed that to be a fraction fuller so it wouldn't have moved as much before getting to the bat. Another quality delivery. It had everything, movement, bounce. Once again, playing inside the line of the ball, didn't hang his bat at that one, which is good going. I think you can survive on a pitch like this when you play inside the line of the ball. Keep it simple for yourself. Just needs to be a bit fuller. Just needs to be a bit fuller. Giving the batsman too much time to see the ball after it has pitched. Pumped. Omar Gul needs to relax and uh, not worry about getting a wicket of every delivery. I think uh, it appears that way from a distance that he's uh, looking for a result of every ball. One day international number 27 for Omar Gul, just 22 years old, so you can appreciate that he's not very experienced. What a delivery. Just a fraction fuller, that's what he needs to be. It's 15 for one. Terrific over from Omar Gul. He got the ball to uh, seam around. It like difficult for uh, the batsman. Quite absorbing those first five overs. Pakistan were 25 for two. Ireland have uh, not done a bad job. 15 for one. They've lost one wicket. Still plenty of options left in the tank. Tell you more about it. Amir Sohail has been joined by Tony Kozia. Thank you, Ramiz. Here's Sami. That's close. They're begging. This time, umpire drilling is not giving it. But very close indeed, Sami is on song here. Well, the umpire has to make sure whether the impact was within the stumps or not. Outside the off stump, and the batsman was playing a stroke. And Hawkeye suggested the ball wasn't bending in towards the stumps. So in the end, it was a good decision. Yes, the Pakistanis, they are desperate and they are clamoring away to get a decision in their favor. I've had an email sometime back, in fact, um, in the warm-up matches. No! 
which question why we should say it's a good decision. But, uh, a decision which, as we saw, was not out and uh, you would expect it. When you get a bad decision, well, we can say that. Those are umpires out there, though the email said. But on the elite panel, they're being well paid and they should make the correct decision. Uh, not always uh, that easy and that certainly was close enough that's very close gone now Mohammed Sami strikes again uh, this is not going to be easy for the Irish they're two down to 15 balls moving around but they exploited the pitch and now Sami is doing the same well, Mohamed Sami is responding very well. He's a light and he's on fire. And he's pitching the ball in the right areas with plenty of pace behind them. And he has picked up his second wicket in a similar fashion. Two wickets there down. And the Irish team in a spot of bother with 15 for two. Yep, another left-hander comes in, it's Niall O'Brien with Ireland two down. With uh, Morgan just out leg before, Sammy has got a couple of leg before decisions. There have been a couple of uh, close decisions as well. Playing his first match of the competition. No, no. Sammy coming into the side for today. Keep it there, keep it there, keep it that way. For Rana Navid. He replaces uh, Rana Navid, and uh, there's one of the changes, uh, Mahmoud, who is a medium pacer, who may well appreciate these conditions. He's on as well, and he's come in for Danish Canaria. Nicely yep. tucked off for him. Just the single. Well, the pressure has been exerted by the Pakistani bowlers. They are bowling with a lot of venom. And these Irish batsmen, they really have to absorb that pressure. If they have to overhaul the Pakistani total of 132 runs, which doesn't seem enough, but the conditions, they are still suitable for the pace bowlers. So Semi with a wicket in the over, 16 for two. Having a great time, the Pakistanis now. Oops! I reckon we could sell that footage to one of those programs like uh, your funniest videos. We understand that he's seeing the physiotherapist and that he's called his wife to say he's okay. Seven 
So Bray, the central maker against uh, Zimbabwe, gone and Morgan as well, two leg before decisions. Here's goal. Nyla Brand's first delivery. Short legs in there, two slips, a gully. Pakistan attacking as they have to. There's no way they can defend their poultry score of 132. As far as the runs are concerned, they've got to get Ireland out. Well, if the Pakistanis, they really have to get the Irish out, somebody has to speak to Omar Gul. He's been bowling magnificently with a lot of attitude. But the only thing lacking in his bowling at the moment is not looking to pitch the ball up. He's banging the ball very hard. No. Like there. It makes it much more easier for the batsman to pick up the line and the length of the delivery and leave it easily. But if he starts pitching the ball up to the batsman, it'll mean he'll give himself a lot of chance to pick up a wicket. Have a look. 90% of his deliveries they are pissed back of the length, not the right line, and the length on this kind of a surface. Come on, boys, come on, get him, get him. I wonder if he's been looking at Mohamed Sami, who's uh, got the leg before decisions. He's pitched the ball well up, he's probed away, he's pulled a good pace. The uh, goal here just a little bit short. And another thing he's missing. He should have seen the pattern of the play from Mohammed Sami. He's been bringing few deliveries back to the left-handed batsman, and that's how he got the wickets. And so far, Omar Gul is reliant on away swing, away movement. He's not mixing the deliveries. Well, as soon as you say that, uh, perhaps he's been uh, advised by someone down there. But exactly what you were saying, he brought that one back in. He doesn't swing the ball uh, as Sami has done. Sami has swung the ball into the left-handed batsman. And he swung it at pace. He swung it relatively late. But uh, Umar Gul is not swinging the ball in the air. Here's some Mohammed Amis. Now look at that swing, swerve. before the second one <laughs> nicely tucked off the legs now they'll try for a second and get the second the fielder well I think the captain of the Pakistani team for a change has to come out of the slip and have a word with the bowler he has to ask him to try and pitch the ball up try and induce a fall stroke by pitching the ball up and enticing a batsman to hit the ball through extra cover this is too easy for the batsman back of the length deliveries single to end the over seven overs they are gone and Ireland 19 for two Close match building up. Pakistan 132. And in all the World Cups that uh, they've competed in all, of course, this is the second lowest equal that Pakistan have been dismissed for. 132 was also their score in that ill-fated final at Lords in 1999 against Australia. That's too short. Now, exactly what Amin Sahil was talking about. Ball too short, and also the width was there. And uh, a fine shot off the back foot by Nyla Brand hit it well well one thing's for sure when there's a bit of grass on the surface there has to be a bit of moisture 
and as a fast bowler if you bank the ball short the wicket is going to hold up the ball for a little while and that allow a lot of time for the batsman to rock onto the back foot and hit the ball anywhere and that's what happened that's better that's the line that's the length he's up nearly 90 miles an hour mohammed sami not always does he have control and that's been the problem why he hasn't been able to maintain his place in the Pakistan side started off brilliantly as I remember it got seven wickets I think on his debut in test cricket but there hasn't been able to maintain his place in the side but he's got good pace not a big man but he's up to near 90s 88 miles an hour that last delivery Well, it'll afford a run out here, the Irish team. Well, I think there is there is a time for a bowling change. I would like to see Rai of Tahar bowling, who is well suited to these conditions. The skies, they are enveloped with the clouds. The atmosphere is heavy, and it'll help a bowler like Rai of Tahar to swing the ball in the air. Azam Mahmood can be a right choice as well. It's well played because it was a difficult delivery. It was well up. Came in late. Pakistan here being uh, assisted not only by the fact, as Ireland were, that uh, this pitch is well grassed, but also now it's overcast. It was overcast through much of the Ireland innings as well. We had a brief uh, shaft of sunlight come through between innings. But out to the west, it's quite heavily clouded. And it is overcast. And good conditions for bowling. Just brushed the pad on the way through, so that uh, negated any wide call. Only one extra by this time. Ireland had many. In fact, uh, Ireland with... 29 extras, 23 wides, three no balls, three leg bites, 23 wides and a score of 132. Could have been uh, chasing just over 100 without all those uh, extras. Top score in the innings, the extras, 29. That's well struck. There's a chase here. If the car out, pulls it back and they'll come back for a third. That's well struck. Nice looking shot. End of the over. Eight gone, 26 for two. Once again, it was nicely struck. Not trying to overhit the ball. Allowed the ball to come close. Presented the full face. Good effort from Rao Iftahar. Certainly saving a run. Watch the ball till the last moment. Neil O'Brien and picked up three runs. Seven more needed now. This is so absolutely crucial, this match. Pakistan already lost to the West Indies in the opening match of the tournament. And to lose here would uh, just about put them out. I think it's uh, almost certain they would have to go out in the first round. It uh, might just send Ireland through. They're tied against Zimbabwe. They win here. They have one more match to go in against the West Indies. And you'd say that even if they lose that, uh, they feel that they should get through. It all depends on what Zimbabwe does against the West Indies, of course and against Pakistan. No. And if by chance, just by chance, Ireland move on to the Super 8, a lot of jobs will be left vac vacant in the Caymans, in the US and of course in Ireland itself 
A lot of these spectators have come in. I'm sure hoping against hope that they would go through, but expecting just to be in Jamaica for the first round matches. This is Ireland's debut in the World Cup. No, no. But if they get through, there's a prospect of heading south in the Caribbean for the Super 8. Heading to places like Antigua and Grenada and the Guyana. And Barbados as well. But still a long way to go. Well, during the first game, there should be about 2,000 Irish fans. But after that tie, they have enticed a few more Irish people to come into the ground. Shot. What a shot. Effortless. So pleasing to watch. And there was a hint of arrogance in that stroke as well. Nyla Brown looking uh, in really good touch. What a, a straight bat that is. And just to use the cliche, the cricketing cliche, as wide as a barn door. That bat. Good reply from Omar Gul. Bending his back on that occasion. Getting the ball to bounce. And seam away as well. With the overcast we have, it looks as if the, the cloud is high and that um, we won't have any rain. And uh, with 132 is just the 133 just a target. So you would expect one way or the other to match the finish uh, earlier than scheduled. So the light shouldn't come into it. But if the game is interrupted or had to be abandoned, 20 overs is all that is required to make a match of it. Today, that is. If uh, it is finished today before 20 overs, we have to go into the rest of the reserve day tomorrow. 31 to do. for Irish win. Thirty-one for two, Ireland. So Sammy on the way now. Both wickets to him so far. And chopped away on the first bounce and could make it. Oh, desperate dive. And poor running from the Irish batsman. They thought that after that misfail, the ball is going to roll over towards the boundary line. Wasn't the case. Omar Gold reacted very quickly, recovered well. Dived full length and only gave away a single. Whatever happens from here on, the Irish in their debut tournament has given us, have given us great entertainment so far on and off the field. These two left handers batting with great freedom and great confidence. Looking at the score from from Port of Spain between uh, Bangladesh and India, things shaping up there as well could be a, an upset. 115 for three Bangladesh. Twenty six overs are there, chasing 192. So you would say at present time, Bangladesh on course 
for um, an upset because Bangladesh, of course, even though they are a full member of the ICC, they are, they are rated and, and ranked ninth on the ICC One Day International table and uh, India would be expected to have won that. A good lifting delivery, chest height. Porterfield kept it down well. Sami now to looking to follow up with a full length delivery. Well, it was played well. It was indeed a not good delivery. And it was zipping through. I was managed well by the batsman. Look at those eyes. He means business. Not the sort of delivery he was looking to follow up with after that short one chest tight. Again, too short with that uh, delivery. Porterfield was on the back foot waiting for it. 